All right, we are two minutes early. Uh, <laughs> boy, yeah, we're still Baptist. <laughs> Don't turn your TV off or nothing. We still are. Uh, it's good to be back at our service tonight. It sure feels awful late, uh, but uh, we're glad to be here. So you pray for us and pray for the sick, pray for the afflicted. There's a lot going on. Still a lot of people sick and people that's lost their loved one. Pray for our men and women standing in harm's way. Pray for the needs of our nation and pray that the Lord would bless and help. And uh, we know that God is able to do all things. And so uh, unspoken, everyone, raise your hand. Unspoken request. All right, may the Lord bless and touch. All right, uh, I'm going to ask Aaron if he'll ask God's blessing on our service tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity you've given us to be back in your house again tonight, Lord. Lord, we pray that you be with Brother David as you bring our message, Lord. We pray that you touch someone's heart. Lord, we pray that you be with all the prayer requests and spoken yes, God. Them, Lord. Lord, we just give you all the honor and praise and glory, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to try Lily up the body. Uh, might have to change the key, but we're going we're gonna to try to kick it off. So you pray for us and sign with us. I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's a very stopping power to my soul.
right here. Here, I'll hold it. Go right ahead. No, you're going to sing. I'm not going to sing. You sing and I'll hold your harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it back. <laughs> oh. You big chicken. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, Connie, I'm gonna, I'll try to help you get started on this. 199. Kill you, maybe.
okay? I got it. I got it. Oh, man, he got us. We still here. He's ever walked. <laughs> Any other time, he's a highball in it. Hey, man. Yeah, we 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 got bombed by Ken Three. <laughs> hey, man. But we back up. May the Lord bless. So give them kids a, all of my hands. All right. opportunity in his house as always. Um, I'm trying to find this home real quick. It ain't as big as my other book's house, so it shouldn't take as long. Um, this will do it for now. Make you a seat. Thank you. 
sometimes that's all I can ask. It's for the Lord just to help me carry on. The, uh, uh, the devil comes against us. He tries to destroy us and tries to get us down. But the truth of the matter is that if we'll just hold on, he'll help us carry on. I know it ain't quite Christmas time yet, but I'm going to do this song. And y'all can help me for some of you that know it. It may be gee, I can't remember. I ain't got it wrote on this. As I said, thank
like training. I done had an explosion on the Facebook. I, I, I was going to walk in that door that was open, but I decided I won't. And uh, God's, God's been good to us, ain't he? Amen. Amen. Well, I know it's going to be a good day. Yeah, El, Wayne. I know, Wayne just loves me. <laughs> Amen. I don't know. Has he been talking to you, Al? Yeah, right. Oh, okay. All right. Well, this old world's no place to live. Not enough love, not enough giving. Sometimes I'm glad to see it. I roll my way. This life of storm and buffet ain't gonna be my heart forever. Gonna be moving. One of these days. it in do it a little both ways tonight so I hope it'll be a blessing to you today I remember standing at my daddy's bedside as the tears filled up the wrinkles on his face as I held him
It's going to be a great day, ain't it? Amen. Book of 2 Peter, chapter 3. A few weeks, uh, a few services back, I don't know how long, uh, we, we thought we were going to preach on this, didn't even preach at all that night. And uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, it don't bother me if the Lord changes it and we don't tonight, but it don't bother me if he says to but I'm going to try to speak to you on this tonight if I can. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it goes right along with all the things we've been trying to preach for the last several weeks. Second Peter chapter 3. Uh, I, I'm going to read two verses of scripture. I'm going to read verse number 8 and uh, verse number 9. You got it? Listen to what God is saying. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let us pray. Father, thank you that you gave us this day, and another opportunity to come tonight. We ask God that you might use us tonight for a little while just to bring glory to your name. God, that we might let the light of your love shine on the pathway of some soul that is lost. God, wherever they might be this season, and that they might realize that there's a God in heaven that loves them. And Lord, there's a price that's been paid that they can be saved. They do not have to die and go to hell tonight. Father, we pray that you might anoint us and season us with your wisdom and power. And God, let us be a help to every soul that's gathered here tonight. Strengthen our old body, God. You know what we need tonight. And Father, we just ask you to do it for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you about God's love for fallen man or mankind would be a better word to say tonight. When we think about it and we allow our hearts to consider this, we, we realize that there was a time in our own lives, every one of us here tonight, there was a time in our own lives that, friend of mine, we were the subject of this verse that I just read, verse 9. We was the subject because, friend of mine, we were lost and we, we had not the promise of everlasting life. We're the reason, friend of mine, that Jesus Christ has come and shed his blood that we could be saved tonight. But there was a time that we was far away from this. There was a time that we had turned our back, we'd run away. We, uh, let's just be honest, there was a time that the farthest thing in our mind was living for God. We were wrapped up in the world and all the things of the world and we were sucking all the gusto out of the world that we could. But Jesus still loved us. He still shed his blood. He still paid that price. And God's love hasn't changed today. Mankind's love toward God has changed, but God's love toward mankind hadn't changed. You know, I was thinking as Joseph was singing that song, wouldn't it be great if God let this nation stand till Christmas that the United States of America had an old-fashioned, heart-to-heart, God-felt, spirit-led Christmas for the first time they've had in a number of years. Wouldn't it be great if we come back to the understanding of what everything's all about? Amen. 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 Would it not? Amen. Think about it today. Friend of mine, we're, we're living in a time when everything is just replicas are, are pushed aside today. Amen. As uh, Joy and I went up to uh, uh, the Hobby Lobby there, this, uh, this, and I, I, I mentioned the name of the store, I guess I shouldn't have, but we did. Well, that's where we went, all right? And they had all this Christmas stuff, shelves after shelves and tables after tables, percentage off, percentage off. There wasn't one thing in that whole place about Jesus. Amen. Are you listening? Not one thing about the Lord. Amen. Oh, they would play some gospel songs. But there wasn't one thing about Jesus. Why? Because it don't sell. Are you listening? Amen. If it don't sell, nobody wants it. 
The greatest gift ever given didn't cost us a dime. Amen. 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 It wasn't wrapped in shine and paper with a bowl, but it was wrapped in swaddling clothes Amen. and laid in the manger tonight. Let me get on to this evening. God's love for fallen man. Amen. The cause, friend of mine, of Jesus Christ and his long suffering. Friend of mine, God has given us the time for repentance. Where, where would you be tonight if, if God hadn't allowed you to repent? You know, God was long-suffering to you. I, I doubt if there's anybody or very few that's in this church tonight or under the sound of my voice that the first time God knocked at their heart's door, they opened it up and let him in. Where were we? Well, you know, God, it was long suffering from that point on. God, God is obligated to knock one time and the rest is long suffering. Where would you and I be tonight without the long suffering of God? Without the love of God that was bestowed upon us for, as the Bible said, not willing that any perish, but all should come to repentance tonight. God's love for uh, uh, far exceeds our capacity of understanding. I, I, I can't understand how God could love somebody as wretched and vile as me. I can't understand how God could keep loving someone that cursed his name, that turned my back on him, that rejected the great call of love. I can't understand that. But friend of mine, God still loved me and I'm thankful tonight that God didn't give up Amen. on me tonight. God didn't just throw the clay away. But he kept knocking at my heart's door. Don't you think, friend of mine, that all through the annuals of time that the hearts of mankind may have wondered about the fulfillment of God's word and why things were like they were and why it seemed as though God has long taken his action against wickedness and wretchedness of the sinful things that's going on. Have you ever wondered why God lets us go on? Let's go on today. Have you ever wondered why God lets good people suffer at, at, at the hands of wicked and wretched people? But we're not God tonight. I don't understand a lot of things, amen. Friend, God, friend if God had been answering my prayers as I prayed them, and I'll just be honest with you, might as well, honesty is the best policy. If God had been answering my prayers the way I prayed them, I, hey, been some of these folk woken up in the night, I asked God to shake the ground under their feet and hold them at night, that they come to the knowledge there's a real God. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine, and that they wake up, bless God, while they still have time. Amen. You see, God loves whosoever will tonight. God loves and God saves. You know, it's hard to understand tonight how God could save someone that's committed murder, the most wretched and gross sin. You see, I don't believe God can save them. It wouldn't be grace if God couldn't. Jesus couldn't have made an atonement on the cross had not he been willing to die for the most wretched and vilest of sinners. Amen. It's not just you and me here tonight that the love of God has been bestowed upon. But it's whosoever will. Amen. Are you listening tonight? Sometimes we like to think that uh, uh, even though we might have been bad, that friend of mine, that's as far as God goes with his grace, but it ain't. It ain't. Somebody on death row can be saved tonight if God's dealing with them. Amen. Are you listening to me? Some of the most wretched, vilest people can be saved tonight if God's dealing with them. And you say, God don't deal with them people. Yes, God does. God does. I don't understand it. But God does. Amen. I thought about, friend, don't you think that there was time that people felt the same way we do, wondering why God lets these things continue to go on? I, it seemed like maybe Peter was confronted with the same issue that hearts were looking for the return of the Lord and they found themselves wondering, how long, God? How long? Have you found yourself wondering, how long, Lord? Have you found yourself saying, even so, come now, Lord Jesus, so we're not God. 
God knows every soul that's out there in the mind. Uh, yes, God knows who's going to be saved. Yes, God knows who's going to be lost. Uh, the, the grace of God, the sovereignty of God in the mind. Uh, uh, it, it demands the heart of God to act uh, and give an opportunity for every soul to say yes or every soul to say no to the mercies of God. Where would you be if God had, had to cut it off? Before you got saved tonight. I'm sure people prayed prior to my salvation. Lord when are you going to come. And why are you going to let these things go on. Amen. A lot has happened down through life. America has suffered down through life. It's been a fight. To keep our nation where it is today. Amen. And it will take a greater fight to keep it where it's at today. Amen. You're listening to me. Amen. Prayer. I, I, I don't know what it's going to take to bring America back to her knees, but I believe we're getting close. Amen. To bring the church back together in one mind and one spirit, praying for the almighty power of God to come down. Amen. But I believe we're getting close tonight. What about you? God's love. The fallen man. When the heart allows himself to become somewhat doubtful of what's coming because they're focused so much on what is, then oftentimes they'll yield themselves to the enticements of the devil and be persuaded to question the authenticity of God's word. People are questioning the authenticity of God's word because they don't want to know their own. Amen. They don't want to know they've sinned against God. So they think if they deny the authenticity of this book, that somehow they'll find a door of escape from the judgment of Almighty God. Can I tell you, they won't tonight. There is not one thing wrong with this book. Amen. There is everything wrong with us. Amen. Are you listening tonight? So many people have fallen to the enticements of the devil. Questioning the Bible. Looking for compromise. Looking for condolence. Amen. Doctors that are taking these babies life, some of them say they're Christians. Some of them, friend of mine, that are standing for abortion and, and, and standing for same-sex marriage and, and standing for this, uh, 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 touching the kids and, and trying to do it. They say they're Christian. Amen. And my Bible says a Christian is to be Christ-like. Show me where Jesus got anything like that. Are you hearing me tonight? Show me where Jesus has done any of these things. Then we got something to talk about. But God's love is so great and so wonderful to us here tonight. Amen. Let me tell you, friend, there's a lot I don't know. But everything I do know, God has taught me. Amen. God has taught me. I didn't have to go to one of them cemetery schools. I didn't misquote it. I've quoted it the way I wanted to quote it. I hear them people on Facebook say, listen, that little southern dumb, he don't know how to say seminary. I didn't see where there's much difference. Amen. 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 Friend of mine, I, I believe today the Bible teaches us that uh, when we have the Spirit in us, and he that hath not the Spirit is not God's, uh, but when we have the Spirit in us, that the, we need not one to teach us, but the same one that anointed us shall teach us in all things. Are you listening to me? Amen. I've got nothing against education, but I have got everything for inspiration. Amen. Ain't you? Amen. Inspiration. Amen. Tonight. Have you wondered, uh, there was people, friend of mine, that has been come up down through the ages that uh, they couldn't hardly read, but uh, they could read enough of the Bible and God had called them uh, to preach the word of God and they could preach hell, fire, and real stone and see people come for miles out of give their heart to God. 
Amen. Now we try to impress people with fancy words and documents on the wall. Amen. When are we going to come back to the simplicity of the gospel? Amen. When are we going to come back to the basics? When are we going to come back to the simple salvation? Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Do you believe that? Give him praise tonight. Oh, let me hurry on tonight. I won't get done. People today, friend, are, are making the wrong application to their lives. And it's all because of, uh, of self-invoked theories that, uh, that has been blueprinted by the devil. The devil has blueprinted a, a standard of life for people. Amen. And they're living that. Did you know that? There's a lot of people out there believe in drinking. They call it social toddling. Ta 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 ta. Amen. Well, I don't. So if if that makes me mean and bad, that's what I is. Amen. I don't. I believe you ought to leave it alone. Amen. I believe, friend of mine, you ought not put anything in you that takes away your ability of reasoning. Amen. Are you listening to me today? Well, somebody said Jesus drank. Well, you ain't proved to me yet that he drank anything very strong called a friend of mine. Anybody that was in a position of spiritual authority uh, that was to lead people, amen, studied the, uh, the qualifications of a bishop. Uh, anybody that was in a position of spiritual authority and leadership, God said, stay away from it. Amen. 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 Yeah, that means throw that case in your refrigerator out. <laughs> Amen. That's something. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. We used to, I'm going to tell on myself. We used to make homemade wine when we was a kid. Stank. God is stank. Used to make homebrew. God is stank. Amen. One day I wasn't very big, but about that tall. I decided I was going to find out what my father and granny thought was so good about that stuff. <laughs> I got one of them Bama jelly glasses. And I'm going to tell you something, folk. I held my nose and drunk it. But I prayed to God I'd never drink another. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Awful, terrible stuff. Now, you can imagine it didn't take much of that to make a little kid a little bit on the whoopee side. <laughs> but we laughed so much at my house, Charlotte. Daddy didn't know my life was coming from the homebrew. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Did you do that? I sure. And, and probably there's a lot of y'all parents did it. You just don't know about it. If you did, you won't confess it. Amen. Amen. Afraid if somebody knocked on the door, don't let them in because it's working off in the closet. <laughs> They'll blow <blow> up too. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case, huh? <laughs> Amen. 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 Boy, there's a lot went on down through life, ain't they? Amen. Uh, I love to talk. I used to say I love to talk to old people. Now I have to say I love to talk to my people. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was talking to an older guy. Some of you folks uh, are not around here. Some of you too young to remember. The square of the didn't used to look like it does now. That it used to be divided. You went down one side and up the other side. And there's cannon balls and a cannon and hey man and. Uh, and uh, there's a statue there. And I was talking to an old guy, and he said, "Yeah, David said back when I was young, said uh, we used to sit on the squire and said we'd try, we'd outrun the police. Said they didn't have a two old junky car, said we could outrun them." And he said, everybody in Walker County drank except the man on the squire. And it took me a few minutes, and I realized he's talking about that statue. <laughs> Everybody drank but the man on the square, he said. Amen. But ain't you glad that God has made a difference? Amen. Amen. God has made a difference. 
I praise the Lord for that tonight. <coughs> I'm trying to get back to God's love for a fallen man. And it had to take God's love for every one of them that was fallen to be lifted up. Amen. Amen. Today. Ain't you glad? You know, we think back and wonder how in God's name we ever made it. Amen. How did we ever make it to where we are today? Only by God's grace. Amen. Only by God's grace. Amen. I want to say to all them people that's out there, bye, 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 slavery. Bye, 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 slavery. Bye, 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 slavery. I want to say to you, if there's any one of you out there as old as me or younger that was raised any harder than I was, I want to talk to you. And if you wasn't raised any harder than I was, I want you to shut up and go to work like I have to work and get about God's work. Do you hear what I'm saying, amen? amen. I, I want to tell you, my parents never owned a, a slave as you consider it, but Daddy had ten of us, say man. <laughs> ten of us. Are you listening? Amen. Well, I'm gonna tell you things were different, Lisa, when I was growing up. They didn't tell you no three or four times to do the work. Amen. We didn't have flashlights. They wouldn't let us carry out a kerosene light. If it's your night to told in the water. They didn't tell you but one time. And you got it in after dark. And as a little kid walking out to the well and letting that windlass down and drawing it up and them tree frogs, and daddy, 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 daddy. Boy, I'll tell you, uh, you'll be glad. You'll run back in. You're lucky to have a drop in the bucket when you get in the kitchen. Amen. <laughs> but you only got told one time. Amen. Amen. What a difference, right? What a difference. Amen. Everybody know what we had to do. And you did it. You did it willfully or unwillfully. You did it. Amen. Ain't you mad? No, I'm glad. I'm glad. Amen. It has put me in a position of great praise and worship to the Lord as I look back and see. Friend of mine, we don't have nothing compared to the world standard, but oh, how great God has been to our family today. Amen. 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 Friend of mine, I, I, I blessed enough, I caught chicken on sale, and, and I, I bought some chicken, we put it in the freezer, and, and I don't have to look through the crack and say, I'm getting that, and bless God, I'll go out to the freezer and get that. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's one thing, we, we never got carried to church when I was a kid. But we went, we didn't have to worry about nobody inviting the preacher home for Sunday dinner because they just barely enough chicken to go around for us. We didn't have none for that dude no how. <laughs> Amen. God loved us so. You know, I, I'm going to say this, and I'm not going to get to preach this all, but God kept his arms around us. Friend of mine, we, we didn't know nothing. I know nothing about the Bible. I know nothing about God. I used to sit and look into the sky and wonder how in the world I got here in the way that I was and what was going to happen. And, and, and uh, about that time, all of that diabetes broke out into the family. And I, I used to wonder about all these things. You see, I know now that God was watching over me even though I didn't know who God was. And God was preparing me for a journey. And friend of mine, he was just waiting for the day that he could tell me to begin. To begin. I'm thankful for that day. I'm thankful for the day that the Lord told me to sit out in the working in the vineyard of the Lord. It's been a rough journey, but it's been a good one. But I couldn't have made it without the love of God. Amen. Amen. Only by God's love today. Amen. Friend of mine, I, I, I believe the word, don't you? I believe what it says. You see, I, I'm going to confess something to you. I believe this book, even though it tells me how wrong I am. Amen. Amen. I, I believe it to be God's word, no matter how bad it makes me look. I believe this to be God's word. Do you? Amen. I believe you do too. Amen. The devil has blueprinted a life for the world. 
A friend of mine, they seem like they're marching to his orders today. Amen. Marching to his orders. The wisdom of the devil. The devil's not a dumb creature. Amen. He was created a special creature. Amen. He was one, a uh, friend of mine, uh, of the cherubs, of uh, uh, the, uh, the closest to the Lord. Most adorned. Hey, hey he, was, he was created in beauty. There was nothing ugly about the devil. And the only thing ugly about the devil now is his sin, his corruptness, his evil. Uh, that's why he's able to appear like an angel of light. Amen. He was created in beauty. But beauty brought forth pride. Pride brought forth a, a, a hardness of heart. And a friend of mine, he was driven from the throne of God. You want to know how, how smart and edu uh, the devil is? He was able to convince one third of the angelic host of heaven, a friend of mine that was created by the same God he was, to follow him. Amen. He's pretty smart, ain't he? Pretty deceitful. And you think that me and you can battle him without God? No, we can't today. If a third of the angelic host of God that was centered around the throne of God, that knew God, that, that knew uh, the glory of God and the power of God would follow the devil, don't you get too bold. Don't get too big for your britches. Amen. You better keep your faith in God and your trust in God. You better keep on the whole armor of God or you're going to falter. You're going to fail. You're going to suffer tonight. God's love. You know, in all rights, God could have, could have destroyed every one of us and started all over. Did y'all know that? God made Adam out of the dust of the ground breathed in his nostrils, and he became a living soul. When God, in the days of Noah, God looked down upon uh, uh, the people and saw how wretched and vile they was, friend of mine, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But God could have destroyed us all and, and started all over. But his love and his grace and mercy is what kept that from happening. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Uh, I think I told you one Bible school teacher asked her class, said, uh, does anybody know Noah's wife's name? And, and the little fellow raised his hand, and she was so shocked because nowhere in the Bible can you find a name to Noah's wife. And, and he raised his hand, and he, she said, you know Noah's wife's name? He said, I sure do, teacher. He said, would you stand up and tell us? And said, her name was Grace. She said, how do you know it? He said, Noah found Grace in the eyes of the Lord. So I'd be all right, wouldn't it? But have you ever thought about how close we come? Amen. We come within eight souls. Did we not come within eight souls? How close we come, but yet how far we have ventured. And it's all been because of God's grace today. Do you understand, compared to the nations of the world, that America is a young nation? Do you understand that? A young nation. Why are we here today? We became a refuge for God's people. We became a refuge for others that were having to flee because of persecution and oppression. And, and we've become a land, friend of mine, that God has opened up. And look what God has done for us today. The same God that they're trying to dispel from all things is the God that made us what we are here today. And he did it all in love. Every bit of it in love today. Amen. Amen. It's amazing to watch what used to be done this way, picking cotton. Now and then they got them mega machines that's just a picking and a picking and a picking. Oh, I tell you, if you ever, you talk about a, a little country boy coveting. When I see them corn pickers, oh, I thought, God, what I would have loved to have one, just a one roll got. 
just a one row. So I didn't have to walk behind that wagon and wave them cuckaburs. If you ever had to go through a cuckaburr patch, I don't care how much you scratch before you get to the end, you're going to look like one big cuckaburr when you get to the end. There ain't no need in actually of trying to clean your clothes because you're just going to turn around and go down the next row. <laughs> Amen. Why didn't you spray it? There wasn't none of that going on in our place. There wasn't no spraying chemicals to kill weeds. We plowed it with a mule. Amen. Till it got so big we couldn't plow it. Amen. But we couldn't keep them cuckabers out. Mm. But look where God has brought us. Look at the technology. Amen. Have y'all seen that goofy looking plane that the Wright brothers had? Amen. And here's this. Well, if he'd had Nancy on there, they'd have flew a little further. But, but he was on there peddling, you know. <clears throat> and that thing went up. I thought, my, if I had Nancy in the, in the seat with all of that lift from that hot air, I'd have just sailed all the way over. But look where we come from. And I want you to notice something, and I'm going to hush. I'm, I'm, I'm running some rabbits, but look how fast we come from that flight at Kitty Hawk to what we've got in the air today. Amen. Amen. Look. Look where God has brought us today. Amen. Amen. Look at where we've come from the time that George Washington didn't have uh, enough ammunition and, and the, the people, his soldiers were starving and freezing, didn't have any clothes. Friend of mine, look to where we've come today as far as our ability to take care of ourselves in the warfares. Now, who done that, folks? The same God that people are turning their back on today. Are you listening? We wouldn't be here today without the love of God for fallen man. Are you listening to me? Amen. You and I, if there ever was a time we need to get earnest with the Lord, it's now. If there ever was a time we need to cry out with from the depths of our heart for God's power to work in our midst, it's now. If we're ever going to pray for conviction to come, we better start praying now. You know what's going to happen? Y'all can get us on. I tell you, we're going to sit around on our hands until the Lord comes and raptures out those that are ready. And all of our loved ones are going to die and go to hell because we have faltered in our work for the Lord. Are you listening? It's serious. We have let the devil take away our freedoms. Freedom of the worship of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something, friend. When this country was opened up for freedom of religion, it wasn't opened up for the idolatries of the, uh, uh, and the paganistic things that has been brought into this world. It was freedom to worship God. Amen. God. The one God. Not many gods. Somebody said we can worship any God. Sure you can, but that ain't going to make it the God. Amen. Amen. The God. We need to come back to worshiping God. We need to come back to the all- powerful God that loved us enough to send his only begotten son. And Jesus loved you enough to let him drive nails in his hands and nails in his feet and a crown over his head and a friend of mine his back beating his face marred and plucked out his beard and everything they did. He loved you enough to just keep hanging up there. Hanging up there that you and I could be saved. You know, listen, friend of mine, the crucifixion of Jesus was was a long time before I come along. Amen. As far as Rosie's concerned, it was just the day before, but <laughs> he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. The songwriter wrote a song when he was on the cross. I was on his mind. I believe that. Do you believe that? I believe when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. 
And I believe when he hung there and, and all the sins of the world was upon his shoulders, my sins was right there with everybody else's. But you wasn't born, no, but God knows it was going to be. Amen. And he was willing to die for me even before I come into this world that I could have hope in everlasting life. Is that not love? Amen. Is that not God's love? Amen. For a fallen man tonight. Amen. I don't know anybody's heart this evening. I just know Peter was dealing with something that is very familiar with what we deal with today. And, and he, he told them, said, in, in other words, he said, it's not what you think. It's, that's not what matters. It's not your opinion. Your time is not God's time. God's time is not your time. One day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. But he was saying, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men call slackness. He's not delaying his coming because of what you think. But he said he's long suffered to us, word. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Peter said, he's not coming because of what you think, but he's coming because of who he is. His love, his time, his way. How many of y'all understand we, we talk so much about him splitting the eastern sky and, and we think of that the Lord's going to come early some morning. God can come right now. Amen. The Bible said we know not the day nor the hour. He can come in morning, the noon, or, or night, or midnight. Said if the good man of the house had known in what hour the thief was going to come, he'd have stayed at home and not suffered his house to be broken up. So many people today, if they know Jesus was coming tomorrow, they try to live like hell right up to 12 o'clock and try to get right. Amen. Isn't that bad? Yeah. We don't know when he's coming, but how many of y'all believe he is? Amen. Why do you believe he is? Because he said so. Ain't that good enough? Aaron, I don't need no great... Uh, professor of theology to go through a great big spiel of why the Lord's coming. I don't need to know that. He said so. Amen. That's good enough for me tonight. All the devils of hell can shout against the coming of the Lord. I still believe he is. Why? Because that's God's love to us. Amen. God's coming after us today. I may have to go by way of the grave, but if I do, it'll still be God's love. The death's going to get the body, but God's coming after me. Amen. Death's going to get the body no matter what. This flesh ain't going to heaven. Amen. It ain't going. It's corrupt. Somebody said it's going to be changed. Amen. There's going to be a change. But this body ain't going. The corruption must put on incorruption. That's the dead. They're going to put on a brand new body. The mortal must put on immortality. That's us which are living. A brand new body. Amen. We ain't going in this thing today. I'm not going to heaven in this raggedy old friend of mine. A convertible that I've got. God's going to give me a, 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 a brand new one. Ain't you glad? I, Aaron, I'm not going to run over heaven looking like a, with a Cadillac, a doodle bug looking with a Cadillac gas tank hanging out. God's going to give me a brand new one. God's going to give you one here today. Ain't you glad? Why, preacher? Because God loves us tonight. Hey, if you ain't got nothing out of this service tonight, Understand that God loves you. Tell that to your heart. God loves me. God loves me. The world don't. But God loves me. Aren't you glad of that tonight? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna close this. There's a there's a gentle spirit here tonight. Amen. You see, it, gentle spirits allows us to do some thinking. Allows us to kind of absorb things in our life and see where we are and how we stand with God. And then, friend of mine, we can react to God's call if we believe him enough to do so. What's God telling you tonight? God's love for fallen man. Maybe one day I'll actually preach that message. But if I don't, who cares? I just want to do God's will. How are you doing tonight between you and God? Nobody looking. Y'all play. What about it? Can you envision Jesus Christ on an old cruel tree? The blood running down his face. His back tore all to pieces. Actually, it that would reach all, reach all the way around him and on his sides and, and his stomach and great big pieces of flesh jerked out and his face beaten and marred. The devil's crowd said, if you be the Christ, then come down, but he would And there you are. There you are in the eyes of the Lord. You're the reason. You're the reason he wouldn't come down. You're the reason that he fought that final fight. That he defeated the devil with his hands nailed to the cross and to the and his feet. He defeated the devil for you here tonight. Is there anything you need to talk to God about? Maybe you just need to come and thank him. Maybe you don't want to ask him for nothing, but you want to thank him for everything. Amen. You got to see yourself now. You're, you're the reason he made an atonement. He cared for you, bless God. What are you doing for him tonight? Would you come? He walked every mile. Amen. We're going to have prayer. There's people in the altar. Is God not asking you? Is he not seeking you? Is he not calling you? Amen. Was what he done not a worthy price? There was no one else that could come. There was no one else that could could die for you. That that could pay that price. But he did it. Sometimes, God, I wasn't sure if I knew if I was coming or going. So there you was. All I had to do was pray. All I had to do was call upon your night. And there you was, God. He was there all the time. And oh, how you nurtured me. And oh, how you would direct me and get me back where I need to be. God, only love, only love would do that tonight. I've been rescued from the horrible pit. I've been lifted up out of the miry clay. You've set my feet on the rock, God, and you did it all because of love. I'm not worthy to be saved. I'm not worthy to have a, a home in heaven. But I have because of love. Because you love me despite my own ways. You opened up the door of heaven. Thank God I accepted the invitation. And I've been saved. Saved tonight. God, the world needs a taste of love. We need to be saturated in power. Wisdom from on high. Make us bold in your 
precious word. Let us not back up from the devil, but let us press forward.